Hello. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Yeah. Magandang umaga. Yes, good morning po. Okay, um siguro ano, uh, we can start para hindi po sayang ang time natin. Uh, well, waiting for Sir Mahar siguro sa closing na lang si Sir Mahar. Let's make this ano um event casual, chill lang tayo. I know uh Marami tayong mga inaasikaso sa ating mga campuses and uh, also, you know, mga issues, uh, yung mga bagyo. Uh, kaya chill lang tayo today. Ang, ang magiging um, agenda po natin for today's webinar ay I'm going to um, present some of the uh, parang ano lang, pahapyaw na presentation about the UP Pandemic Response Team as a whole yung ating analytics team, and then magkakaroon po tayo ng individual reports from the different campuses. Siguro ano, since nauna si Mayang, <laughs> magsimula tayo sa South. So si Mayang ang isa sa mapinaka nauna dito. Okay ba sa'yo Mayang? Gawin-gawin natin. No worries. Okay. So magagaling tayo sa Mindanao, and then susunod ay UPLB, then Diliman, then Baguio. Papakita tayo sa 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 ano, sa Baguio. So ganun po ang gawin natin. Um nandito na po ba si Roll ko lang tayo. So ay, nandito na si Mayang, si Ma'am Kayen, si Ma'am Rizabel ba? Wala pa siya no. So at least ano, ang mga kahabol siya. Pero ay, ay nandito nakita ko na si Doc Dona dito. Hi Doc Dona. Kamusta from Baguio? And, Hi. Hello po. Okay, nandito na yun si Sir Mahar. Siguro, uh, ano, um, unahin na natin. Ready ka na ba, Sir Mahar, for your ano, short ano lang, opening, welcoming remarks. Chill lang tayo dito. <laughs> okay, chill lang naman. Ano. Yes, yes po. Wala masyadong problem. formalities. Yes. Sige, oh. Sir Mahar. Uh, ah, ito, ito, medyo nasiraan kasi yung sasakyan ko kagabi, kaya... Ano, medyo puyat ako, no? Tsaka gigising ko lang. Uh, but anyway, sige, since ano naman tayo, informal naman tayo, no? Correct? Uh, first yes, of all, good morning everybody. It's nice to see some of the familiar faces here, no? Kahit photo. At uh, ngayon lang ako nakasama ng, ano, ng nakasama sa Zoom ng ganitong karaming mathematicians, no? And uh, statisticians. Tatakal lang ako, Jomar, ba't dalawa ang litrato mo dito? Ah, dalawang laptop po ang ginagamit ko. <laughs> ako rin yung ah. nag-host. <laughs> Multitask. Oh, right. oh. uh, and uh, welcome po. Na nakikita ko si Father Nicanor, Austriaco. Good morning po, sir. Ma Father. Mamaya, sir, mag-prayer tayo, ha? <laughs> uh, anyway, nakakatuwa naman na... Uh, ano, uh, good morning. Good morning, Father. Uh, nakakatawa na nakasama ko and I know that you've been working hard for the past uh, two years uh, marami na rin kayong pong natulungan ng mga LGUs at mga tao with the information that uh, you are providing no? uh, meron tayong mga na susuplayan ng mga information na tingin ko uh, hindi pala, alam ko nagagamit nila no? uh, hindi ko na lang sabihin kung saan yon but uh, anyway, I hope that uh, the discussions here will be informative and uh, productive. It uh, is, a, is a venue where we can learn uh, from each other uh, and uh, improve the work that uh, you have been doing for the past almost two years. Tama ba? So are we already two years? Yes. Almost. Yes. Oh, almost two years. No? Uh, mga one year and... Uh, nine months. Hindi ko na patatagalin itong opening message. We're informal and I, all of you I, I, I know are busy and are also preparing for the Christmas uh, uh, season no? for, for Christmas Day. Uh, tuloy na natin itong uh, usap-usapan and uh, again thank you uh, for everybody for doing all of the things that you do and for helping our countrymen. Thank you, Jomar. That, that will be all for the opening message. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Mahar. Yes. Uh, habang nagpe-prepare tayo no, for 
for Christmas. Panghuling ano to, panghuling hirit yung ating uh, webinar for today. Um, before tayo pumunta kay Mayang for the UP Mindanao, uh, I'll just present some of the ano, uh, parang pahapyaw nga na na pagtingin dun sa mga nangyari from the previous ano ano um, wait lang, open ko lang yung slide yung mga nangyari sa previous ng mga activities natin under the UP Pandemic Response Team okay wait mag share screen lang po ako Okay, um, ano rin po pala, no? we are recording this webinar. Um, isa sa mga goals natin why we are recording this is uh, we're going to edit definitely yung mga mangyayari uh, this morning and then we're going to upload this in, uh, in the One UP Modeling YouTube channel and then siguro pwede natin i-share sa uh, Facebook group ng UP Resilience Institute. Okay. So, konting pahapyaw lang po ng mga nangyari dun sa ating two years na pagsasama. For those people here na hindi naging part ng project, bigyan ko lang po kayo ng uh, maikling uh, overview. So, we, we started with this, ano, no, with this initiative, yung modeling and analytics uh, activity activities natin under the UP Pandemic Response Team na pro bono, walang, walang budget, kanya-kanya tayong uh, sikap that time. Uh, kung matatandaan natin, even before the ECQ, nag-uusap na tayo and then nung nag-ECQ talaga, todo yung ating mga activities. And pro bono talaga yung mga nangyari. But we know hindi tayo pinabayaan ng um, UP system and we are very thankful sa UP Resilience Institute for for doing everything no para makakuha tayo ng budget. So we got uh, around 6 million budget para makabili tayo ng mga equipment, laptop. I know, masaya tayo kasi dumating na sa inyo yung mga laptop after many, many years. Kasi alam naman natin yung procurement sa UP medyo problematic. But nakadating na sa inyo yung mga laptop. And then, para pag, ma, mabigyan din natin ng sweldo yung mga hinar nating RAs para makatulong sa COVID-19 initiatives natin. So, yun yung mga ano, no, um, yung overview ng project natin. Uh, we got uh, that money. And uunahan ko na din, isa sa mga pinangako natin sa UP system na every million, one publication. And actually, we got that. So, at actually, sobra-sobra pa. Uh, yung ating mga nilalabas sa media, yung nilalabas natin sa na, na, na mga um, policy notes, uh, na-back up natin ng science, na-publish na -publish natin yung ating mga papers, yung ating mga methods sa reputable journals. And we are very thankful sa, sa ating lahat. Uh, effort natin lahat ito. And uh, sabi nga natin, sa UP Pandemic Response Team, yan yung logo natin, tayo ay prompt, reliable, and transparent. Okay. So, kung matatandaan natin, uh, ang ginawa natin sa UP Pandemic Response Team, hindi lang naman modeling and analytics team yung under ng UPPRT, no? Halo-halo tayo, may from economics, social sciences, communication, lahat sama-sama tayo. And hindi lang diliman, hindi lang, hindi lang nasa Luzon. Andiyan din ang Mindanao. Uh, we also have people, no, from, from Cebu, Tacloban. Although, uh, hindi sila naging malaking part nung, nung ating project itself, pero napakalaki nung kanilang contribution dun sa... Uh, individual activities natin. And definitely, nandiyan Diliman, LB, and Baguio. So, inter-CU talaga yung nangyari. And sabi nga natin, um, mas naging malakas okay, yung ating impact dahil nagsama-sama tayo. And uh, konting uh, para maalala natin kasi itong ginagawa natin, magiging part ng history. Yung ating ncov.ph, nung wala pa masyadong information, nirelease natin tong isa sa pinakaunang dashboards ng COVID-19, yung ncov.ph. At uh, we know, maraming natulungan ito, lalo na, lalo na nga nung time na wala pa masyadong information. And aside from providing datasets, data visualization, 
we released many policy notes at yung mga policy notes natin, uh, nilagyan din natin ng mga infographics para ma, maka, ma-relate talaga natin yung ating mga mensahe sa publiko. At hindi lang basta infographics, nilagay din natin ito sa iba't ibang lengguahe. May Bisaya, may Bicolano, at marami tayong volunteers na, na, na sumali sa atin para tulungan tayo sa pagtatranslate ng ating mga policy notes. At yan, po ay, yan pong mga policy notes natin lahat na yan ay nasa encov.ph website. Okay. And as, andito si Sir Mahar, di ba? Kitang-kita naman natin, nasa Malacanang. Ikaw mang papalit Sir Mahar kay ano, <laughs> spokesperson, the joke lang. Uh, <laughs> pero matatandaan natin, ito yung mga time Sir Mahar, di ba, na, na maraming tao ang, ang hindi pa nakakaalam ano talaga yung detalye ng COVID-19. Pero we are here providing insights, providing information, at uh, nagbibigay tayo ng mga... Uh, recommendations, suggestions sa national agencies lalo na uh, nung, nung pinatawag uh, kayo ng ng presidente natin, di ba? So I I hope na um etong mga nangyari dati ay maalala natin lagi kasi part na to ng history natin uh, sa UP at uh, lalo na naging malaking involvement ng mga mathematicians, statisticians at mga quantitative scientists dito. And uh ito yung isa sa mga uh, uh, pinapakita kong ano no uh, kunyari ito yung ating epidemic curve when we look at the epidemic curve we just don't look at one metric kasi we want to look at the different perspectives different angles ng epidemic curve natin so marami tayong mga metrics na kinocompute at tan dito sa pagcompute natin ng metrics sino pa ba ang ating uh, pinaka nangunguna syempre nandito si Peter Peter hindi pa tayo nakikita in person pero uh, feeling ko close na close na tayo. So, thank you Peter for providing many uh, computations sa mga metrics at uh, dahil dito sa mga ginagawa natin, nakikita natin yung iba't ibang angulo. Okay, hindi lang dapat isang metric, iba't ibang metrics kasi bawat metric iba-iba yung binibigay na na insight, na information. Ayan, so andiyan sila uh, si Peter providing long-term and short uh, Uh, short-term projections, si Peter talaga yan. No? And then the UP, the, the UP Biomathematics team for the long-term projections. And I know uh, yung mga ibang miyembro natin dito may kanya-kanyang projections sa different uh, localities nila. Okay, so we, may kita natin yan yung minsan din na gustong-gusto ng media na makita. Pero aside from providing long-term and short-term projections, sabi ko nga, um, lahat ng methods natin... Uh, pina-peer review natin internally and also externally kaya na-publish natin sa mga journals. And kung matatandaan natin, we really started with national, 'di ba? Kaya nga napatawag si Sir Mahar sa sa Malacañang. National talaga yung, yung nag-start tayo, pero hindi tayo tumigil doon. We want to go granular kaya pumunta tayo sa mga localities. Nung wala pang masyadong nagfo-focus sa mga LGUs kasi panay national pa that time, tayo talagang bumaba na at tinulungan natin yung mga LGUs. Kaya nga yung iba nagtatanong, um, after national, ano mga ginawa natin? Medyo kung makikita natin, pumunta tayo sa mga uh, LGUs, localities. Kaya yung iba parang tinatanong, saan napunta yung UPPRT? Bakit parang sa national, uh, minsan hindi tayo nakikita. Pero actually, kasi mas nakita natin na mas magandang tumulong sa mga LGUs at Maraming LGUs tayong natulungan from Mindanao, Visayas, Luzon, and yung mga key cities natin, Quezon City. Uh, ayan, until now, actually may mga activities tayo with Quezon City. Tapos mga LGUs like Bataan, Agusan del Sur. Ginawan din natin ng kanya-kanyang mga dashboards yung mga yan para ma-monitor nila yung kanilang mga um, cases. At binibigyan din natin itong mga to na... Ano, no, na Binibigyan natin sila ng uh, real-time, almost real-time um, data analytics. So minsan binapadalhan natin ng everyday na, ano, no, na information para sa governor nila. And may mga iba din na, na mga national agencies until now we are helping. Siyempre nagsimula tayo with Department of Finance, tapos sa NEDA. Um, and then uh, kung, titingnan, kung babalikan natin yung history na itong mga ginagawa natin ay... Yung iba hindi kaya natin isulat kasi yung iba parang medyo may uh, 
NDA na tayo-tayo lang muna yung pwede mag-usap dito kaya hindi natin makikwento. Pero uh, alam natin sa ating grupo na marami tayong natulungan, hindi lang natin ma-share kasi confidential yung information. Ayan, and then we also had partnerships with um, international organizations like ADB. Uh, meron din tayong naging uh, collaboration with with UN Population uh, Population Fund at uh, marami tayong na-provide ng mga insights sa kanila regarding COVID-19 and yung impact ng COVID-19 sa socioeconomic uh, situation ng Philippines. Tapos, until now, marami tayong partnership Tuloy-tuloy yung partnership natin with Zilig Family Foundation. We also have partnership with uh, Philippine Society uh, of Public Health Physicians at may ginawa tayong website. Actually, yung website na to, nakalink din naman sa ncov.ph. At uh, pinakamalaking part din nito yung mga ginawa ni Peter. No? So, uh, lahat yan ay nagkaroon tayo ng partnership. Even before pa talaga dumating yung mga variants, na-establish na natin itong consortium na to. And then until now, uh, sabi natin hindi tayo titigil until recovery at siguro post-recovery nandito pa rin tayo para matulungan yung ating communities. At hindi na lang to about COVID, kundi kung ano pa yung magiging uh, uh, lessons na makukuha natin sa COVID para may apply, let's say may future outbreak or sa ibang mga disasters, baka Uh, itong partnership natin, itong collaboration natin, maging tuloy-tuloy. Uh, may mga pag-uusap tayo tuloy-tuloy with the LGUs, with the national agencies, and even now, no, meron tayong nilalabas na monthly uh, uptake, yung UP take natin. At um, dito natin nakikita kung ano yung nangyayari sa previous month. And itong mga nilalabas natin ev uh, every month, parang nagiging part na rin ng history natin. Kasi nare-record natin yan, nilalabas din yan ng UP system. And yung nagiging call natin lagi simula pa nung unang-una, open science, open data, especially in these times of crisis. And marami tayong maalala that time, di ba? Nagkaroon pa tayo ng somehow, <laughs> ano ba to? Hindi man, di naman pagkakatampuhan, di ba, with DOH dati kasi parang na-point out natin yung mga issues with data. Pero ang kagandahan naman doon, yung mga nilabas nating uh, criticisms ay naging maganda yung output kasi nag-improve talaga then yung data drop um, and hindi naman din tayo naging antagonistic with them. Actually, mas nag-collaborate pa tayo talaga sa kanila. Cooperation talaga yung kailangan uh, uh, mangyari. Although, syempre, nag-start, minsan kailangan mag-start yun by, by uh, tanggapin kung ano yung mga criticisms. And we also had uh, many discussions about ethics. Kasama rin dito si Peter, si Darwin. Yeah, wala si Darwin dito, no? pero si Darwin isa yan sa mga uh, uh, naging kasama rin natin sa ating data analytics team. At uh, marami tayong pinag-usapan about ethics, accountability, transparency. Kaya nagkaroon din tayo somehow ng, ng uh, mga pag-meeting pag dati about internal uh, uh, peer review, yung mga ganon. Okay, at hindi ko na po masyadong ano, no, patatagalin. Uh, I know marami tayong mga mathematicians modelers dito and thankfully, before pa the pandemic, we, we had already yung parang bond. Okay? Kasi nagkakaroon tayo ng IWOM, International Workshop on Mathematical Biology, even, even before the pandemic at nakatulong naman ito. Okay? Yeah, so I think uh, I'm going to end here and ibibigay ko na virtual floor kay Mayang. Mayang, ikaw na rin magpakilala sa mga miyembro mo. Okay, thank you. Yes, hello. Uh, I don't think nandito sila. I think ako lang. Okay lang, i-record naman natin to and then share natin yeah. para ma mapanood nila. Thank you. Sige, um, let me just share my screen muna. Hold on. Um... So, is that clear sa lahat? Nakikita nyo ba yung screen ko ngayon? Yes, yes. Mm -mm. It's presenting well, right? So, maayong adlaw day kaninyong tanan. That means uh, good day to all. Um, I actually prepared a quite formal presentation. Kaya medyo, <laughs> uh, just bear with me na lang. So, actually, uh, as the co-investigator of this project, I am really beyond grateful to share yung mga initiatives and outputs na ginawa namin sa UP Mindanao on COVID-19 pandem pandemic response. 
well, we already have seen the urgency of providing active and evidence-based actions in flattening the curve. And this is exactly the reason why the experts in UP Mindanao joined the UP Resilience Institute Pandemic Response Team. Um, so this is the UPRI, UP Mindanao team. Um, I think you see some familiar faces here. Um, as you can see, baka mapansin nyo si Dr. Manix Baha ay kasama namin. Uh, well, he is actually parang, he stands like as a consultant sa team namin. Um, he has been helping a lot on uh, the, the statistical modeling aspect of, of this project. So we are a team of UP Mindanao faculty, project staff, uh, research and project assistants student assistants and consultants from other departments chaka sa ibang constituent units. Uh, so I think it is best for me to just tell you how was this team formed in the first place. Um, months before the UPRI project started, well, we already know COVID-19 hit the country and several disease projections have sprouted everywhere. Kahit yung may kasama ngang disease projection na magiging extinct na yung mga human beings, and as someone who does mathematical biology, I realized na siguro dapat um, at the regional level mag-contribute din kami. So with this, um, the Interdisciplinary Applied Modeling Lab or IAM Lab was formed under my initiative to contribute really to the development of the understanding uh, sa COVID-19 dynamics in the country, especially in Davao region. So the lab consisted of my research assistants, some applied math students, and UP Mindanao faculty who expressed their interest in disease modeling and data analysis. Um, how did we do this? Well, we just started with a very simple brown bag session last March 2020. We discussed specific or various epidemiological models for COVID-19 transmission before the lockdown came in Davao City. And then this was then followed by a series of online meetings no medyo na fatigue na ako sa online meeting since March 2020 pa pala ito and then uh, we discussed this uh, interesting research questions ano yung mga mas mas importanteng mga questions na kailangang sagutin during that season okay and those uh, questions actually formed the objectives of the lab so from then on we've done mathematical and statistical modeling just to try to understand how we could use yung mga early available data like the number of person of person under monitoring you remember that pums puis and the publicly available patient level data uh, we were like thinking how to use them to project the number of cases until July 2020 under different scenarios and to determine what patient information is linked to his or her survivability. And this resulted to uh, writing lots of technical notes or policy notes that later on made headlines locally. Eventually, yung initiatives na to led to further extension like gamification of the COVID situation and using social media to make the public and government agencies more aware about how we could use our mathematics to obtain insights on the dynamics of COVID-19, uh, specifically in the Avo region. Um, of course, uh, the good thing about doing this on social media is naka-encourage naka din sa iba. Like, for example, um, some of my applied math students, they made use of their social media platform to provide updates on the geographical aspect of COVID-19 transmission in Dabo City. Um, also, uh, just so you know, research works related to COVID-19 were presented by UP Mindanao students, RA, and faculty as e-posters on an international research conference that was held last October 2020, and uh, these e-posters bagged the first, second, and third place uh, in that event. At itong virtual conference na to has become a great opportunity for us to showcase to the public what we do in the IAM lab and that we exist. No? So with this event taking place, ang UPRI IAM has been formed. So the UPRI IAM group in Mindanao was divided into three research subgroups, namely the empirical modeling group, mechanistic modeling group, and the GIS and dashboard group. Uh, for the empirical modelers, uh, we have three um, three objectives. Uh, first is to assess the impact of government interve interventions as well as other potential disease drivers to the daily reported number of COVID-19 cases. Second, we want to identify the risk factors affecting COVID-19 positive patients uh, according to severity. Nila. And third, we want to measure the survivability of COVID-19 patients. Um, and just well, we are modelers, so 
how do we approach these objectives? Well, we just use different statistical modeling techniques. So for the first objective, we made use of uh, this so-called generalized linear autoregressive moving average model na hindi typically ginagamit kasi it's quite a new uh, technique. So it actually combines um, yung time series aspect and yung um, uh, regression aspect ng, uh, ng system mo and zero inflated negative binomial. Secondly, we uh, for the second objective, we used ordered logic and probit model. Well, that's like a typical technique to um, identify um, the risks uh, factor affecting COVID-19 positive patients. And lastly, um, for the third objective, uh, we utilize the Cox proportional hazards model just to check in survivability, survivability of COVID-19 patients. Um, I have to mention that these analyses make use of data involving profile of patients like sex, age, comorbidities. And as a result of that, we realize that we need to apply ethics. So actually, we delay the apply ng ethics. And uh, this, in turn, although we have some results nito kulang na lang is ma-approve you or ma-clear kami sa ethics no kasi nga ongoing pa yung review ng ethics na yon um also uh yeah so also those uh those models uh ginamitan rin namin nag-ano rin kami of course may write up kami niyan and we're we're hoping to um we're actually sharing some some results no sa DOH uh kahit hindi pa well published or reviewed yet Share lang, konti lang, hindi masyadong marami. Um, on to the next uh, research group. We have the mechanistic modeling group where we aim to understand COVID-19 transmission dynamics using an epidemic model and use the model estimates to generate weekly and monthly forecast reports on COVID-19 cases, deaths, recoveries in the seven cities and provinces of Davao region. So in performing these objectives, we essentially ended up adopting the SEIR model as shown here on the slide, which was developed by the MODAP group or Mod Modeling and Application Group in UP Diliman led by Dr. Aurelio de los Reyes. Um, the, MODAP, the MODAP group initially used this model to fit the NCR data, but later on they modified the model because it did not consistently fit well due to the noisy nature of the NCR data. So instead of throwing the model, I actually asked Sir Ao, I told him na, na baka, ano, baka we could adopt the model and see if it fits well with Dabo data. So in modeling or in model fitting and projections, rather, we considered COVID-19 data from uh, provinces, uh, different provinces in Davao region, and then um, sineparate namin yung uh, Davao City tsaka yung Island Garden City of Samal. And since December 2020, uh, weekly and monthly forecasts of COVID-19 cases uh, were generated on a regular basis. So uh, this, what you're seeing on the, uh, on the slides, just an example or sample plots showing um, you forecast uh, using May, uh, from May to June 2021 per province or city. Um, and our results are actually remarkable because although each of these provinces and cities, they differ in terms of the community quarantine levels and periods of implementation, the model's quality of fit is good, judging from the how, how the model captures the trend of the cases per area. And, and these are visually evident on the sample plots here. Um, <clears throat> additionally, the group also coordinated with other UPRI epidemiological modelers group, like in UP Diliman and UP Baguio, um, we meet kami weekly, no, kasama yung mga RAs namin, uh, to further investigate how the um, implemented community quarantine level can affect COVID-19 transmission in our respective communities. So the model was, yung initial model na pinakita ko earlier, was then modified to include a parameter, which we call G, as you can see in the slide, and that, that parameter G represents how strict or loose the implementation of interventions are, um, and that the greater the value of G, the less strict the interventions, with one representing no intervention at all. So in UP Mindanao, what we did was make use of that model and then fit it to Davo City data. And from there, we generated a 15-day forecast of how of, of the new and cumulative cases under four different values of G corresponding to the different levels of community quarantine. So as you can see here, you will, you will find that 
uh, the, the projected number of cases um, increase this as we increase the value from uh, from a value of G rather from 0.25 to one, which is really what we would expect. No, because the the more relaxed the quarantine, we expect higher cases, and consistent the mention of biology. Uh, moreover, when G is lowest, in this case 0.25, the model captures in decreasing trend of the new cases. And then for the third research subgroup, yung GIS and dashboard group, we focused on creating a database in a form of, of a dashboard, um, dashboard for spatial maps. At saka nag-update rin kami ng mga uh, data analytics, uh, like focusing on Davao region. Um, mostly ang ginawa namin dito ay uh, we we made all these maps and then yung mga necessary information at mga typical metric uh, ina add on namin the on sa dashboard so it's not really that similar to the dashboard that was shown earlier by Jomar uh, because mas mas tapo focus kami the on sa spatial uh, spatial temporal aspect ng ng transmission ng covid so just like the mechanistic modeling group, uh, this group also generate, generated weekly spatial maps on the distribution of COVID-19 cases, as well as the average daily attack rate or ADAR in the region using COVID-19 data that was provided to us by DOH Region 11. Moreover, um, so ito yung initial interface ng COVID-19 dashboard in Davao region. And the dashboard is currently under the development by the NICER UPMIN program. And I'm going to mention to you what this NICER UPMIN program is. Okay, so now let me proceed with uh, one of our milestones. So yung UPRI, UPRI, UPMINDANAO team actually published a paper in an ISI journal. And this study basically aims to understand how to make decisions about public health, uh, taking into account yung mga risks that that comes with them and by incorporating risk management tools and and mga decision uh, making theory like AHP and um a key finding a paper na to, uh, it shows that if decision makers will prioritize reduction in fatalities by simply improving healthcare system then covid-19 contagion in Davao city can be controlled and eliminated in 3 months time uh, if you want to know more about the details of this uh, work you may access the article on the risk analysis journal website for the working papers, we have finished the write-up for the empirical modeling objectives as stated previously. And um, here I'll just be sharing with you a little bit kung ano yung mga na, na, ano namin, na, na figure out namin. Well, um, the working paper actually highlights this graph showing the timeline of implementation of the government interventions and yung corresponding COVID-19 cases reported daily. And uh, I think I have to mention here that the government interventions that are being considered are those that are being implemented in Davao City, like for instance, like lockdown, food ration distribution, liquor bans, um, QR code, mandatory wearing of face shield, and control the entry of um, returning overseas Filipino workers and LSIs. And our paper highlights that among the interventions or found, we found that the mandatory wearing of face shield does not have a significant effect in reducing the COVID-19 incident. So isa yun sa mga key na ano, um, result namin. So again, disclaimer lang, hindi pa ito published kasi nga hinihintay pa namin yung ethics. Um, another ongoing working paper uh, deals with the question on um, whether if you apply naive fitting procedure or piecewise fitting procedure, on an essay of an SCR model using uh, using Davo region data. So what is this naive fitting approach? Well, naive fitting approach refers to fitting the data in a model without really considering you changing community quarantine level through time. While for piecewise fitting approach, we fit the data in a model by first you chop the data in terms of the community quarantine level implemented. So our results can be summed up in this plot showing how the two models compare with the actual data. And in this plot, we observe that the naive model is more likely to underfit as compared to the piecewise model. While the piecewise model captures more or less the actual community cases during ECQ and GCQ, but then when it to MGCQ, uh, well, it underfits the model. So um, it underfits the data, rather. So this study implies that given the community quarantine levels, um, 
that we know that it, it changes, it can affect the, the COVID-19 transmission, one must really be very, very careful in choosing the model fitting strategy in making baseline estimates and projections about the epidemic. So a few UP Mindanao applied mathematics students were hired actually as student assistants in the UPRI project. And eventually they became part of the NICER UP Min program under um, many mentors from uh, many co-investigators. So these student assistants generated novel research ideas that became the research topics for their undergraduate thesis. So here's just a screenshot of a successful thesis pro proposal defense of these students. Last but not least, uh, the UPRI project was instrumental in providing technical assistance to the DOH Davo Center for Health Development. Specifically, um, we assist uh, this agency by providing them weekly situational reports. Um, and that situational report is approved by the Kataastaasan of the DOH in Region 11, consisting of weekly and monthly forecasts on new and active cases and other um, baseline epidemic estimates like the infection rate. Um, yeah, those kinds, uh, th those symmetric. So this initiative has been um, continued under NICER UPMIN program to this date. And, and all of these activities would not be realized uh, without agencies reaching out to the academy. So in these ways, important information are shared between us and our stakeholders. So uh, speaking of stakeholders, um, it all started last November 2020 when a letter of request was sent by DOH Davos Center for Health Development to IAM Lab about creating an interagency technical working group which focuses on the analysis of COVID-19 data in Davo region. So uh, as a result of that, the group works harmoniously with um, DOH, DCH, DCHD. They provide the covid -nated COVID-19 data to us under a data sharing agreement. And then they also accept student interns in their agency. Kasi nung time na yun, uh, wal, na ano sila parang nagcut sila ng manpower uh, and, and wala masyadong statisticians as a result of that. So um, nagsasend kami ng mga students uh, doon to assist them. While sa side naman namin sa UPRI, UPMIN team, aside from the students, we also regularly provide output like uh, yun nga, yung mga situational reports, tsaka yung impact assessment reports, reports, spatial maps, at tsaka yung mga informal policy briefs. Um, well, I couldn't say they should really policy notes kasi usually pinipresent lang namin yung result namin and then they will ask us questions. So... Yun, uh, we, uh, so the, all those things to be synthesized into points of actions by the agency. So sila na mismo yung bahalang mag-implement. Ano, mag implement, no? ang, kaila, ang, ang pwede lang namin mag magawa is to recommend and then they will be the ones to um, find ways how to implement yung mga nire-recommend namin. So this collaborative effort reach actually into its first year this month since its realization and we are grateful for the Davo Center for Health Development for, for their continued trust with the team. And now, especially now that it is under uh, the NICER UPMIN program. So I've been mentioning this NICER UPMIN program. And so I think it is best for you to, to make you aware that, that the, the UPRI project paved the way for the first niche center in the regions for research and development in Mindanao on the use of quantitative methods to solve our health crisis. So this center is funded by the DOST SNICER program, thus the name, and it is dubbed as the Center for Applied Modeling, Data Analytics, and Bioinformatics for Decision Support Systems in Health. Um, yung budget niyan is around 60-ish million, I think almost 70 million, and we have four projects under this program. And just so you know, the ongoing and spillover research ideas ushered by the UPRI project have been continued and extended under this program. So what is this program all about? Well, we have five uh, main objectives of this program. First, we want to enhance disease surveillance. How do we do that? We want to combine genomic and mathematical approaches in order to do that. Second is we want to foster interdisciplinary collaboration among quantitative and analysts and biologists in the region as we understand that um, we have to go interdisciplinary if we want to prosper and we want to help uh, or to see or do good science. 
And the third is to offer solutions tailored for the diverse setting in Mindanao, where we account for the social cultural differences and other behavioral aspects or factors compared to Luzon and Visayas. And we want to act as a hub for innovation and technology development through capacity building and mentoring practitioners for interdisciplinary study of infectious disease. Because most of the, uh, if you come to think of it, kung tatanungin mo ilan yung modelers, ilan yung gumagawa ng, ng similar things na ginagawa natin, I would say na ano lang tayo, like ma, we can, we're very few. No? So um, because of this, we have to mentor the next generation. Ito, yung, ito talaga yung iniisip ko kasi um, our, our knowledge won't last. Like we, we grow old, right? So um, we, we really need to, to reach out to the next generation, mentor them. Kasi for sure, mas marami pang mga diseases ang, uh, ang darating. Uh, I don't know. I, think, I, I really think it's, it's going to get worse. But yeah, so we just have to help the students and mentor them. Um, and lastly, we want to lead in interdisciplinary approaches for research, education, and outreach to overcome health crisis, especially in vulnerable country uh, communities. And with these targets in mind, ito yung naging tagline ng center, providing sustainable solutions to aid communities from the health threats in the region. And our, our, and our approach for this to make for this to, to happen is to, to make use of the plethora of available um, health data to our own advantage. Kasi marami tayong data sparse at saka all over the place. And, and what we want to do is how can we use this data to our own advantage and uh, with the aid of sophisticated state-of-the-art methodologies. Um, and for, for the information of everyone, we just finished year one of the program and we're, we're so glad to receive its approval to continue next year. Now, I want to end this presentation with this statement that actually crossed my mind while, while pondering on these initiatives. Um, ito yung nag cross sa mind ko. In transcending beyond disciplines, we can do great science together. So this, this statement is actually an invitation you know, to remove the bar barriers to keep us from, from having interdisciplinary collaboration. And with that, we are sure that uh, the scientific and evidence-based solutions that we intend to produce can be achieved and will greatly empower decision makers to make positive impact uh, to the community. So I'd like to acknowledge the UPRI IAM team for their utmost effort. So yeah, yung mga names nila nakalista dito in contributing their knowledge and skills to come up with the different approaches in helping uh, mitigate COVID-19 transmission in Davao region. I also would like to thank stress that one um, modeling and applications group from UP Diliman Institute of Math for the collaboration with our team and mentoring our uh, team members. And lastly, I would like to thank you, you, the UP Resilience Institute for the support to the research groups from different constituent units of the UP system, especially to Dr. Joma Rabahante for being the trailblazer no? and giving us the opportunity to join the one UP uh, pandemic response team. Once again, maayong buntag sa tanan ug daghang salamat sa inyo. Ha? Yes, thank you Mayang. Uh, congratulations sa nicer project. Sana pag face to face makabisita kami ulit niyan sa Davao. <laughs> like yeah. Actually speaking of that, um ano, may support rin sa UP system uh tumulong sila by providing us funds to build the nicer infrastructure facility. Yes. So exciting, exciting times ahead. Ito talaga ang, I think, I would say yung main, main thing about this UPRI project ba. Na salamat sa UPRI project. Dahil doon, nagka-center sa UP Mindanao. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mayang. Um, siguro, ano, for Mayang, tsaka doon sa mga mag-present mamaya, hintay muna kayo, no? sa, sa dulo na lang tayo mag-Q&A and magkwentuhan para mas mas ano ba <laughs> mas casual mas relaxed okay so now um, i'm going to move to so from Mindanao puna tayo ng Las Banyos uh, magpapakita lang po ako ng video uh, ito po yung ipepresent ng UP LB team ito pong video na to ay uh, ito rin yung pinresent namin sa um, Gawad Edo Campion the UP LB team won the Gawad Edo Campion this year at ito po yung pinresent namin sa kanila pero to give justice, kasi yung iba, alam nyo naman, minsan sa, sa media, minsan ako lang lagi yung na-interview. Pero to give justice dun sa mga tao behind ng mga outputs namin, babasahin ko yung mga pangalan. No? So 
aside sa akin, Dr. Edita Jose ang aming director, Dr. Ariel Babiera, Dr. Maika Crisna A. Gavina, Dr. Ranzivel Rojas Villanueva, Dr. Gerald Tubay, si Sir Henaro Quaresma, Dylan Talabis, Christian Alvin Buhat. Si, 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 si Sir Buhat, isa talaga siya sa mga main researchers namin. Although ngayon, currently si Sir Buhat ay uh, nasa University of Houston na, but isa talaga siya sa mga naging uh, ano namin, taga-push sa research na to sa COVID-19. Si Diane Carmelisa Quaresma. We also have people, not just the modelers for epidemiology, but we, have, we also have people doing risk analysis and also for insurance, yung mga actuaries natin. So, uh, sinama natin sila kasi we know because this is disease, no? Uh, Ma'am Destiny Lutero, Kemuel Kindala, Monica Torres na isa rin sa mga ano, number one na researchers natin. Ed Francis Felix, Jimel Gamilia, Angelo Marasigan, Jessa Duero, Eleanor Hemida, Jacob Malagit, Jonathan Mamplata, Yancy Olave, Kyrel Van Verano, Mark Lexter De Lara, Ben Paul De La Cruz, Asra May Kabiri, and John Mark Lampos. At ito po ay galing sa UPLB but we also have people uh, na nag-work with us coming from you know uh, different UP campuses. Isa na dyan si Louis D. Uh, na baka ngayon ay uh, nasa PGH kasi is doc, uh, isa siyang doktor na nag intern ngayon sa PGH so <laughs> baka busy siya ngayon. Okay, so I'm going to share this video. Wait lang po. mathematics team as the medium that bridges the life sciences and mathematics. We envision the team to be a leader and a model of interdisciplinary research collaboration. During the time that there were no enough information, the UPLB biomathematics team gathered information about SARS-CoV-2 and created predictive models to help national agencies and LGUs to prepare their healthcare system, their socioeconomic strategies, and to flatten the curve. In 
this pandemic, we strive for evidence-based policy making. This is why we pushed to have data-driven platform that can be used by researchers, policy makers, and by the public. Monitoring the dynamics of COVID-19 is one of the strategies to fight this disease. Our solutions are not only for epidemiological purposes, but also to aid in helping socioeconomic activities in surviving the pandemic. Big, medium, and small companies have used our platform to assess the risk of COVID-19 spread. Jomar Fajardo Rabahante, our consultant and from the UP University of the Philippines, Los Baños, Institute of Mathematical Sciences in Cebu. Ngayong nasa GCQ na ang maraming lugar sa Pilipinas, kabilang na ang Metro Manila, hindi may iwasan na mas maraming tao na ang lumalabas. 
Kaya naman nag-develop ng calculator ang isang grupo kung saan pwede mo makumpute kung ilan ang posibleng mahawa ng COVID-19 sa pupuntahang lugar. Event R Calculator Nakakalculate nito ang R o ang bilang ng taong pwedeng mahawa directly ng isang COVID-19 positive sa bawat pupuntahang event o lugar. Yung calculator na yung bahala dun sa mathematics, lalabas na niya yung tinatawag na event R. Which is, uh, on the average, let's say may isang pumunta doon na, na COVID-19 positive, ilan yung mga hawa na itong isang to dun sa event. Ngayon, susubukan natin gamitin ang event or calculator. Halimbawa, pupunta tayo sa isang coffee shop kasama ang dalawang kaibigan. Magsistay tayo roon ng isang oras. Kakausapin natin ang cashier, barista at dalawang kaibigan kaya may four unique interactions. Naasahan natin na sa loob ng isang oras may dalawampung taong papasok sa coffee shop. Ipalagay natin na nasa 50 square meters ang lawak ng coffee shop. 0.5 sa transmission probability for the worst case scenario. 0.5 sa effective interventions dahil may face mask at maguhugas ng kamay. At 1 for environmental transmission dahil hindi tayo sigurado kung nalilinis ba ng maayos ang mga hinahawakan dito. So mayroon tayong less than 1 hour. Pero kung dudoblihin natin ang oras doon, naging almost 2 na ang hour which is high risk. Okay, yes. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Um, pupunta naman tayo ngayon sa Quezon City. <laughs> Ma'am Kayen, UP Diliman. Hi. Good morning everyone. Good morning Mahar, UPRI co researchers. I hope everyone has had their coffee on this uh, relatively cool morning. Thank you, Jomar. It's, it's wonderful and inspiring to listen to, uh, to you and Mayang. I'm sure it will be equally inspiring to hear from uh, the group of Mamrizavel later on. It's nice to be part of such an uh, active, uh, similarly driven and highly motivated um, group of researchers. Okay. Again, I'm, I'm Kayen. I'm from uh, the UP Diliman IMAT MODAP group. And I will be uh, presenting our contributions to uh, the UP Pandemic Response Team uh, Modeling and Analytics Initiative. Our study is a model of COVID-19. Just as related earlier, gaya ng mga tungkol sa data, tungkol sa ganyan, minabuti na lang namin bilang nandito din lang sa NCR na mag-concentrate sa region na to. Okay, so I will uh, share my slides, please. Jomar, may I share my slides? Ah, pwede na po, ma'am. Yes, pa. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm also grateful to uh, Mayang for give, giving already a sneak preview of our model. Dito sa talk na gagawin ko ngayong umaga, I will be providing more details to that particular model. Okay. So here also is a quick introduction of our group. This is the Modeling and Applications Group, um, nicknamed MODAP, of the Institute of Mathematics, UP Diliman. 
Okay, right now we are composed of five uh, PhDs and six PhD students, no? with, a, with a wide range of research interests. Uh, in mathematical modeling, we, uh, we study research, uh, um, rather reaction network theory, biomedical and biochemical modeling, um, merong uh, nagme-major na sa amin sa social networks, merong uh, nasa pharmacokinetics and dynamics, and of course, there's uh, the, the study of the hour, infectious disease spread, okay? And, hindi pa po share yung screen ng PowerPoint. Ay, hindi pa? Uh, folder lang po yung nakashare. Ay, sorry, sorry. It's it's shown on my screen already. It's in the lilang ha. Ah, pag PowerPoint show, yun yata na pindut ko. Ayon yun ang PowerPoint show. Nakapu. Okay. Is this better? This works now. Wala pa rin, ma'am. A folder. Uh -huh. Baka you have to share. Uh, Sorry, ha? I think I have to. Um, yung ano, you share. Open ko muna mismo, no? Baka po kailangan. Okay, you think after more than a year, sana na ako dito, no? Pero, <laughs> sandali lang. <laughs> Kaya pag online, ano talaga, ma'am? Mm -mm. This one. Okay na po. Okay na Ay, salamat. Okay. <laughs> so, here, here I am now uh, again. Babalikan ko introduction, no? So now you can see the slides. Um, uh, here are the members of the MODAP group of uh, UP Diliman IMATH. There are five uh, PhDs. Okay, so first there's, uh, there's our uh, Professor Emeritus, Ma'am Polly C. Marami siguro sa inyo naging estudyante niya. And uh, our mover and shaker pagdating dito sa modeling is uh, Aurelio, Dr. Au de los Reyes. Ao and Brian are right now in the in the biomedical uh, group in the new institute of research in uh, this is a new institute of research in uh, Daejeon, South Korea. Vicky is doing her postdoc in Kongkuk right now. No, Vicky, another uh, quite active uh, PhD member of the MODAP group, okay? and then uh, equally active, we call them our super juniors. I, I see some of them here. Olive Ray and Ima are here. Huh? Um, some of them are not able to join because of some uh, internet challenges, but uh, they are who we call our very active set and very, very supportive, very helpful uh, super juniors. Huh? You talk about the numerics and stuff, uh, sila yung uh, largely responsible for those. Okay. So, So, with the COVID pandemic, no, this moved the group, no, na may kanya kanya originally na researchers to urgently focus on the pandemic, no, to study it as one entire group. Okay, so at MODAP, we decided to do an assessment of the diseases spread in NCR. Okay, and the dynamics brought about by the different community quarantines. So we thought we would learn from this. We took the events of 2020 as our period of learning. And then the NCR we took as the population we would learn from. Okay? So as we can also envision that hopefully, dahil mukhang dito naman yung pinakamaraming ganap, no? dito sa NCR, pinaka naging uh, masalimuot sa NCR. So we were thinking, okay, like, like all of us here, that this could be a takeoff point for a more reflective, um, more impactful studies later on. So the NCR, we all know, is just a very small area, a very small dot 
in the country, you know, but it's quite densely populated with around 20,000 people per square kilometer. Okay, so thus it, it's not really surprising if it happened to be or happened to have the largest share of the COVID-19 cases in the country. And to study the dynamics of the spread in NCR, we used an SEIR model. Okay, so maybe all of you are familiar with it already, no? SEIR is susceptible, exposed, I is actually for infectious or for recovered, okay? But we modify the compartment I to include an unreported compartment, no? Or we split I into unreported and reported, okay? So, because admittedly, and dami daming uh, unreported, we, we acknowledge that uh, reporting is largely um, underdone, no? In our case right now. And then uh, consequently, there's a reporting rate row to represent testing and uh, tracing policies, okay? And then we have a population factor used to reintroduce population along with a function G. Nabanggit na rin ito ni Mayang kanina. We assign different population factors such as uh, 10% or uh, 60% to each community quarantine as the assumed portion of the population who are mobile and interacting, or at least allowed to interact during that period. As uh, for the function G, so it is defined as such, you see a sigmoidal function intended to uh, exhibit the effect of the community quarantines and the non-pharmaceutical interventions or NPIs. Okay, and then we use the, those values for G sub zero, okay? 0.25 for ECQ, 0.5 for MECQ, 0.75 for GCQ, and one for uh, the absence no, of a uh, community, community quarantine. So, medyo pa, papel ng papel yung ano, so parang may absence of text not in there, but I hope you can read it. One for no intervening. Um, community quarantine. These are the limiting factors uh, to the interaction that should or would directly affect transmission. Okay, so going more into the community quarantines, we've had these uh, different levels implemented in the NCR since uh, that much remembered March 16 of last year. So these are the now familiar initials, ECQ, MECQ, GCQ, at least for the year 2020. So ECQ is strict test, GCQ is least strict, and MECQ, we called it uh, transitory. Transitory because we, we see it as something which is just a go-to if you want to loosen up ECQ a bit or if you want to tighten things from GCQ. Now, our graphs depict the, the cumulative and daily cases, you know, respectively. That's what you have on screen. And uh, they are based on data obtained from the DOH. And uh, there are timeline demarcations corresponding to the dates when uh, the different ECQ levels were implemented. So we had uh, March 16, we started March 16 for ECQ, together with the first MECQ, that's more or less three months. There was a gradual reopening in GCQ1, but then that saw a rapid increase in COVID-19 cases. And we recall um, the appeal of our healthcare workers in August, no? sometime in August, that brought about a two-week MECQ2, okay? Before eventually, after just those two weeks, going back to GCQ for the rest of 2020. Okay? And you can see the date then red and the model in uh, the model's results in blue. Um, for the respective interacting populations according to the community quarantine levels, a G sub zero of 0.25 for ECQ assumes that only a quarter no, of the population is mobile and interacting under conditions of lockdown and maybe just the barest of essentials where mobility is uh, largely just from the frontline workers. Okay. So after parameter estimation and uncertainty analysis, our model, okay, again in blue, can be compared with the data in red, 
And then, uh, as you can see, towards the right hand end, no, there's a dotted line. Okay, after the dashed line, we try to forecast what would happen. Okay. So, what would happen in, in January or in uh, 2021? That's what we did at that time. This was around uh, the middle of uh, 2021 when this was done. Okay. So, if GCQ continues, no, GCQ2, then that's what you have at the very top. Okay. If you have more strict levels of community quarantine implemented with the corresponding G sub zero levels, then you can see what is expected to happen. Okay. As per the model, there would have been a, a leveling off, okay. uh, a, more, a more observed, something which is more clearly observed with the strictest um, community quarantine implementation, which is ECQ. Okay. But then, of course, your actual data mas mataas tumalabas. No? There is an underestimation from the forecasted continuation of GCQ. And ang mahikita rito, meanwhile, is the data actually is close an absence of, uh, of any strictness or any CQ at all. So yung data na lumabas, is equivalent to having seemingly no NPIs, no, no interventions, and no community quarantines. So, yan ang ating nakuhang forecast at the time. Okay, so we could attribute this to maybe an increased interaction and non compliance. Remember, this is a uh, this is a forecast for the start of 2021. So maaring nagkaroon ng increased interaction, maaring non-compliance pa dun sa mga interventions and sa quarantines over the holidays. No? And we're facing the holidays again. So maraming nagsasabi na ngayon na abangan ang mangyayari sa first quarter ng 2022. Pero sana hindi naman, especially now that most of us have been vaccinated and even have received the boosters. Okay. Pwedeng dahil din sa holidays, nagkaroon ng mas maraming movement uh, or maraming arrivals no? in migration from people coming from abroad. And hindi lang tao yung nag-arrive. Therefore, parang may, may arrival din daw ng new variants. So yan yung mga pwedeng nangyari. Bakit ganon ang lumabas sa first quarter or the early part of 2021? Okay. But otherwise, the scenarios for ECQ and MECQ, as shown, could have greatly decreased the cases if implemented. So for our estimated parameters, okay, this was done. These were done using Latin hypercube sampling and, uh, and bootstrapping. Okay? Computed transmission rates no, or uh, the beta values, first row are lower at the onset of the GCQs, okay? much higher for the rest. Okay? And then for the median period from infection to death, okay? you can see the death rate there, but uh, the period from infection to death is computed here as the, uh, what's this called? The reciprocal of mu. Okay, so taken as a reciprocal and gentayo. Four days for ECQ, 11 for MECQ1, 64 for GCQ1, 6 for MECQ2, 7 for GCQ2. Okay, so one might guess also that uh, the death rate includes some delay of reporting and uh, later on magkakaroon niya ng data correction and so on. Okay. But for the early part of the pandemic, Pag pumunta naman tayo sa raw, the reporting rate was 38, and then uh, somehow it dipped to 28, and then steadied towards the end during GCQ2 at uh, 36%. Okay, so in the case of reporting, again, it's easy and it would be logical to conclude under reporting across the board during all the CQs. And remember, there have been calls of or for mass testing ever since the start. No? So we always assume, again, 
okay, as all of us would want the public to understand that these are all estimates and uh, for everyone to still be careful because whatever we come out with are also um, based on data which may be assumed safely assumed to be under reported so lastly let me just add that we also compared the time varying rt of the model uh, still in blue with the statistical rt of the data in red and the plot shows, we just want to show, we just wanted to determine the model reaches a steady state, which is consistent, very close to the values of R if they were, or if it were data derived. Okay. So our assessment, therefore, in a nutshell, for our model is that variants of the enhanced community quarantine should have controlled the cases in the NCR, especially after the 2020 Christmas holidays. Okay, however, okay, moving on, seeing the second wave of cases in the first quarter of 2021, we also recognize that they may have been affected by, again, increased interaction and non-compliance over the holidays in migration from abroad, arrival of variants. So we had to review the model. We reviewed the model and uh, as usually happens no? when, when you deal with models, nagakaroon ng evolution, nagakaroon ng changes, nagakaroon ng updating and revisions. So in our case, we came up with uh, some versions such as an extension to incorporate the different classifications of infection. No? Kasi uh, nagkaroon ng memo before no? from uh, WHO and we uh, plan to adopt it like nagkaroon ng mild, severe, um, and so on. And then an application of age structuring and the effect of uh, vaccination. Because the quarantines also gave forth uh, some limitations to the movement of uh, different age groups. Okay. And then ganun den yung uh, pag schedule ng vaccination. No? And then there's uh, the consideration also of the new variants, which is one of the assumptions you know, could have been, or maybe one of the suspected culprits of the next surge in 2021. Okay, so there's a consideration of new variants with correspondingly different parameter values and assumptions. Now, these are all subjects of uh, ongoing studies of subsets of members of ModApp with uh, our affiliates in IMAP. And uh, the study, meanwhile, that I presented just now, okay, they have been happily adapted no, sabi nga ni Mayang kanina, and have become a joint work with colleagues in UP Baguio, okay, Dr. Joel Adawe, Ma'am Rizavel, who's here, um, Junas Viernes, Roselle Orian, and uh, colleagues in UP Mindanao. Okay, hello again, Mayang, and uh, Elvina Rosero. Okay, we are now in the process of preparing the, the final draft. No, the final draft for, for publication. Okay. So thank you very much, uh, UPRI, for making all of this possible. Thank you to all of those who have been uh, collaborating also with us and uh, supporting ModApp. And we hope to continue the research. Okay. May we have a better year ahead of us, more research, but less and no more, I hope, no more COVID. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Ma'am Kayan. Yes, sana no more COVID. No more Omicron. <laughs> thank sana you. Sana si Omicron ay Omega na, di ba? Dapat tinawag na lang nilang Omega. Sabi nila, it's, it's likely to be the last, no? <laughs> Pag Omega, dulong-dulo so, na eh, no? Oo, eh, mild na daw siya. Sana, totoo lahat ng sinasabi nila. Everyone's optimistic. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am Kayan. Now, pupunta tayo sa... Malamig na lugar. An ilan ba nga dyan? Nine degrees? Or mas mababa pa? Sige, Ma'am Rizabel. <laughs> yes, okay na po, Ma'am Ma Rizabel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello, sir. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Yeah, thank you po. Uh, kanina po malamig, mga 10 degrees, 11, gano'n. Pero ngayon may init na. <laughs> Nasa workshop po ako, quality assessment ng uh, BS Mathematics. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, meron naman kaming time for this. Okay po. Uh, yeah, thank you sa... Uh, sa time para ma-share din namin yung ginawa namin for the UPRI. Okay, mag-share tayo. Ay. So. Nakikita po ba Sir Jomar? Yes po ma'am. Okay, presentation view. Okay. Ayan. Okay. Uh, good morning po ulit sa lahat. So, uh, this is our uh, presentation from UP Baguio. Uh, kwento ko lang muna pa kung paano kami nag-umpisa. Well, actually, as early as March of 2020, Nag-start na kami maki-collaborate maki with the Baguio City Health Services Office uh, through Dr. Tubera Panis. Uh, nung una, hindi, hindi ko pa tinitignan yung data kasi sabi ko, ah, kaya na yan, Dr. mga ganyan. <laughs> Hanggang sa tumawag na siya, sabi, paano ka ito i-model? <laughs> Pinapamodel niya sa akin yung... Uh, mga cases pero that time zero 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 mga one one ganon hanggang sa nagkaroon kami ng eight in a day so dun dun kami nataranta pero thank you sa mga kolid sa sa UPLB UP Diliman lalo na kay Sir Peter kung nandiyan ka Sir Jomar dun sa mga advice on how to to uh, what to give advice to Dr. Rapanes kung ano man yung kailangan daw Okay, so and then uh, Sir Aurelio de los Reyes, no? thank you then kasi invite niya ako to join the project with Sir Jomar. Ito na nga, the, our UP project, yung modeling and simulation of the spread of the SARS-CoV-2 in UP Baguio. So, salamat Ma'am Kayen at explain mo na yung uh, concepts ng ginawa nating model. So, uh, all I have to do is to present you the final model from UP Baguio or the Baguio City cases. Okay po. So, uh, my group uh, includes uh, Joel Adawe, uh, Junas Paul Viernes, and our RA is... Uh, uh, Rosel Orian. However, we have a volunteer group to handle this exploratory data analysis, or we call it EDA, of the Baguio City COVID-19 cases. And we do this daily. Kasi daily na nagbibigay ng updates to the Baguio City mayor. So, halos hindi na po kami natutulog nung panahon na umakyat yung Delta variant dito sa Baguio. That was about uh, mga April, nag-start na yan. Pero umakyat siya nung September. Natutulog na kami mga madaling araw, mga 1 a.m. in the morning just to submit the daily reports na kailangan ni Mayor. Okay. Ah? Okay, so ito yung group with the volunteers. Si Junas is a, a part of the UPRI project. Chriselle Dalibatika is a volunteer. Shilden is also a volunteer with Joseph, uh, April Mel, Raya, and uh, uh, Dr. Rapanes is a part of the project. So may I present the well kung masasalubong niyo sila <laughs> eto sila mga batang bata pa kami yung pinakamatanda this uh, is me and uh, uh, we have Dr. Rapanes here from the Baguio City Health Services office so ang um, data namin ay directly from the 
LGU. Uh, hindi namin ginagamit yung DOH uh, data. And uh, bineverify siya every day. So if we need to to uh, what to delete some of the cases, nagagawa pa namin. Uh, nababago din namin yung onset dates at saka yung uh, mga iba pang details ng mga cases. So, Ma'am Kayen, ito na po yung aming model na ginawa namin uh, for UP Baguio. Ito po ay hanggang December 2020. So, this is uh, the fit. Okay. Ito, nag-start kami sa August. Hanggang dito, December 2020, kasi eh, yun yung nakita namin na maganda yung uh, data. Kasi dito sa early of this part, medyo may mga zero value, so hindi siya actually maganda. Na, uh, I mean, it's, these are extreme uh, points. No? So napili namin itong time interval na to. So... According to the different uh, uh, CQs, so meron dito MBCQ, one, two, and then three, and then uh, four. Okay. And we saw that the model actually uh, fits the data. Although alam naman natin na uh, hindi naman talaga ganon ka-accurate yung data na nakukuha natin. Okay. So, uh, yung, yung EDA na ginagawa namin is a project to contribute to the city's active monitoring of COVID-19 by providing relative data analysis, graphs, tables, BIS maps, and insights for the city health office in aiding the decision and policy making of the LGU. And uh, as I have said, uh, we partner with the BCHSO. And this started in March 2020. Actually, hanggang ngayon. So, mamaya, dahil namulit na naman si Doktora. So, I think, ginagawa namin, uh, gagawin namin to hanggang, yun nga, matapos yung uh, virus. Okay. <clears throat> Right. So ito yung mga beneficiaries ng uh, research group, uh, the LGU and the, the mancom of uh, Dr. Galpo of the BCHO, Ugnayang Baguio City live interview, the IATF regional and the Baguio City mismo, the BLIS, ito yung mga kapitbahay namin dito sa Baguio. National organizations. Okay. Now, what we do in EDA is actually uh, very quantitative in nature. Uh, meron kaming mga forecast, pero hindi siya uh, yung gaya ng ginawa namin sa yung project. Okay. But this one greatly helped that project kasi nga we need to provide yung cases na kailangan for the verification of the model. So, ito yung project. Uh, may part one dito dahil hindi na siya nagkasya sa isang file. It, this file is actually mga uh, 100 pages na po siya. And we submit this daily to the BCHS. And then my part two, and there's a separate file na lagi ring uh, Bina, uh, binibigay kay uh, Mayor Magato. Okay. okay. So these are just uh, uh, some of uh, those uh, graphs. So we have the maps and then this is the Adar. Okay. Kung nakikita nyo, ganito yung curves for Baguio City. So yung mataas dito was September. As this one was uh, April. Okay, so pababa naman na siya. Okay. And uh, ito rin yung importanteng uh, data na binibigay namin daily. And uh, dito nila kinukuha yung uh, 
or what I mean is they they base the executive orders in Baguio City para uh, mas uh, you, uh, data driven yung mga actions in the city. Okay? So kung makikita niyo yung mga not fully vax, meron talaga tayong basihan kung ilan yung na na walang vaccines no and this data uh, included of uh, uh 21 only okay so a total of 355 was uh, reported since august 2018 kahit may vaccine na pero well, you we can see here that kahit vaccinated na tayo, pwede pa rin siyang maging uh, mortality. Okay. So, ito na ngayon yung uh, epidemic curve ng Baguio City with respect to the GCQs. This is GCQ cases. Ito yun yung green. MDCQ. And then we have, you see, uh, actually, meron tayong four-week moving average, yung nandito, yung orange. Okay? So, actually, ito mga halos mga delta cases na to, yung mataas dito. Okay, so these are some of the... Uh, public disseminations uh, by the group. Okay. So yung output namin ay uh, nakapost sa public information uh, for dito sa UP Baguio Facebook page. Meron din sa public information office ng, ng Baguio City. And these are just a few of them. Ginagamit din siya for the local um, newspapers. And so these are just the uh, uh, screenshots. Parang hindi siya nag-move, sorry po. <laughs> Ayan. So, ito yung mga meetings. Okay. These are some of the results are being uh, used by the city mayor, the regional uh, health offices. This is Dr. Panis. This is, these are DOH personnel. This is uh, Dr. Uh, Panis again. This is, uh, I think, BGH. Yung nandito. Yeah. Okay. And uh, dahil doon, well, masaya kami. <laughs> because we had a certificate of appreciation from the city mayor. So, and uh, uh, we had a chance to meet the... Uh, the vice president uh, Lenny. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we also have enhancement for teaching and research using the, the COVID data analysis. We have uh, presentations and publications international. Uh, these are local presentations uh, then with the Junas Paul Vernes and the uh, um, we have a uh, third place or a paper presentation to the Regional Health Research Conference. And uh, I also had a chance to share this during the UP Baguio Foundation last December 2020. Okay, 
And these are papers done by my students, uh, both in undergrad and graduate courses. So, Piling collage na lang kasi masyado yata ang ano, nakaka- or time-consuming pag i-present ko lahat. Okay. All right. So, uh, 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 madami nang napuntahan yung aming EDA. Well, of course, we're very thankful to the UPRI project kasi ang daming nagawa. Kahit very short yon and uh, na, na project, pero I think we have to continue till matapos na itong COVID na to. Okay. Uh, uh, ikwento ko na lang. So aside from the, 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 the awards we had from the city mayor, meron din akong na-receive na award from UP Baguio. I, I had a special citation award from the chancellor. Uh, naging uh, um, regional volunteer award ako ng, ng CAR. And uh, the last one was uh, the Gawad Pangulo for Research and Public Service. And for that, maraming salamat po sa UPRI. Yun lang po, Sir Jomar. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Sana maka-akit ulit kami dyan sa Baguio. <laughs> okay. So, um, siguro, ano, for 10 minutes siguro, baka may mga questions yung iba or may gusto pang idagdag na kwentuhan. Yeah. Pwede kayo may tanong kay Ma'am Mayang, kay Ma'am Kayen, kay Ma'am Rizabel. Yeah. Um, ito pong ginagawa nating webinar na to is uh, to cap off yung ating project. Uh, yeah, maikli lang yung project no natapos na siya ng November but I think kahit tapos na yung project tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung efforts natin. Actually, <laughs> tuloy-tuloy talaga hanggang hindi pa nagzi-zero ang COVID no sa so tuloy-tuloy. So maraming salamat po. Ah, uh, meron po bang gustong magtanong or magkwento? Siguro mamayang kamusta ang Mindanao ngayon? So far okay naman na no kahit nagbagyo or kamusta ang COVID doon diyan. <laughs> Nandito ako sa Butuan. <laughs> so, uh, walang tubig until now. Oh, as um, hindi pa naliligo. Hindi pa joke. Pa <laughs> naliligo ako kasi naliligo ako ng mineral water. Oh. <laughs> so, order ako ng maraming uh, gallons ng mineral water. <laughs> o di pala ang sikreto na ano? Yung bang sikreto na maganda mong hair? Oh, oh. oh yeah, actually this is inspired from Queen's Gambit. I don't know if you've seen ah, that. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh in fairness lang dito sa Butuan City, bumababa yung cases. At uh, saka, I don't know, it's just going down. Punto yung mall, like, ang walang COVID. Ang difference lang ay nag-face mask lahat ng mga tao. So I'm not sure if it's the same situation there. Um, so, yeah, uh, sa totoo lang, mas na-focus ngayon ang attention sa pagtulong sa mga nabahaan at na, mm. na biktima ng typhoon. Oh, I think tomorrow we will be going to Surigao uh, to help. Uh, my Actually, my staff ako sa NICER program na ubus lahat yung kanilang mm. life. Oh, so, yeah, it, it's very challenging no? uh, seeing all this um, disaster and then yung, ano, yung emotional na ano, aspect. Uh, running a program, running a, a project, tapos yung mga staff mo are are not in good shape because of what happened. Namatayan rin pa isang staff uh, sa ano, hmm. dahil sa COVID last, that was last May ba yun or June? Uh, yeah, so, yun, ito yung challenging talaga. Tapos, uh, isang challenge din, syempre, you do online meetings, no? parang, hindi, hindi lang sa mga meetings natin sa department and sa university, kahit sa research paano mo i-coordinate ito. Yun yung medyo challenging na part. Like you have to to talk to DOH to lots of people. Pero ang good thing is at least online na lahat. Hindi mm. ka napapagod masyado physically. Pumupunta ka sa kanilang office tapos i-ignore ka lang. Ganun. <laughs> 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 Ngayon, hindi na. Kasi pag magsabi sila na online, oh, diretso oh, 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 na. Diretso <laughs> <laughs> na. <laughs> hindi mo ma-feel masyado yung pag-ignore sa'yo. <laughs> 
<laughs> Pero uh, yeah, um, a good thing din, marami na rin kaming connections dahil talaga sa UPRI project kasi parang naging proof of concept yung ginawa pa natin ng mga methodology. Kasi i-apply mo na lang sa iba't ibang regions. Tapos ang napansin ko din, mas willing naman, especially dito sa Mindanao, willing naman um, mga regional offices na mag-provide ng, ng data. Tapos sila pa mismo magsasabi sa'yo na Okay, yung yung data namin na check na namin yung quality nito. Um, yeah, so parang sure na sure sila. Sila nga yung nag-advise na much better na, na sa kanila uh, natin kunin yung data and i-analyze yung data. Uh, so so ganun and and we talk to you know like hindi lang DOH kahit yung mga DOST regional offices um, to support etong mga initiatives, existing initiatives natin. Yeah. Kasi sila yung funder, so more likely ma mabibigyan tayo ng funds. Especially if we want to extend or expand itong ginagawa natin to other diseases. Yeah. So, yun lang. Ma'am, kaya nyan sa QC, may pandemic pa ba? <laughs> Itignan. Kung, kung lalabas ka sa mga kalsada, parang wala. <laughs> parang wala. Eh, pero yun nga I, I think eventually no if we're going to if the initial results on omicron are going to prove uh, parang eventually totoo in general then i think uh, we just have to look at uh, keeping the protocols yeah you know? being nagiging less strict but still we have to protect ourselves again there's still the the under reporting the asymptomatic yung mga yan. So, talaga ang, ang laban mo na lang dito is to, to really be careful. And uh, if you cannot uh, um, uh, cannot rely on individual taking care of uh, them, individuals taking care of themselves, then we still have to keep the, the government policies in place. Kahit pa paano. It's, uh, it's going to be best for everyone. Yeah. Mm -mm. So pwede na tayong umakit ng bagyo, Ma'am Kaye, no? <laughs> Oo, pwede na. Pwede na tayong umikot. Sabi natin. Yung campus to, apat. Sabi natin, Mahar, baka pwede namang isponsor ng UPR ay yung pag-akit ng bagyo. <laughs> pwede na. Yes. And kakapunta ko oh, lang yeah. kailang Ma'am Rizabel, eh. Kamusta ngayon, Ma'am? Okay, okay na, no? Halos konti. Uh, yeah, okay na, sir. Actually, nag-workshop na kami. Mga about more than a 20 kami in in a big uh, room. So, okay naman. At saka healthy naman ang mga faculty. Kasi meron kami ng QA, di ba? Mamaya, mag-QA ka ba? <laughs> <laughs> oh, may ako na ako. Ayun. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. At saka ang, ang thesis na yun. <laughs> UNQA like, ba yan? Na. Yeah, yeah. Bumabalik na tayo sa daily na zero, one, gano'n. Uh, kahapon wow. ay zero kami. And then we... It's just like mga 20 na lang ang active cases namin. Ayan. So, sarap nyo naman mga, kami yeah. sa ano. Yes. Sarap. Sa NCR, masaya na kaming mabawasan ng isang zero. Oh. Oh. Okay. Sana. At sana ganun from... na lang tayo. Yeah. Oo. Oh, sana palapit na sa zero talaga. At uh, eventually, sana bumaba na sa hundreds. Nangingiliti pa lang eh. Na bumababa pa lang eh. 2,000. Ano? Oh. Sana bumaba pa. Yes, yeah, prayers natin yun for this Christmas. Sige po, Ma'am Kayen, may 11 kayo, no? 11 a.m. na meeting. But I think, uh, mayroon po ba kayong gustong idagdag or okay na tayo? We can end this. Salamat po sa mga umaten. Okay na ba tayo, Ma'am Kayen? Uh, uh, yeah. Gusto ko rin sabihin sa'yo, Jomar, and kay Sir Mahar, it was a very welcome, it was a very good idea to bring everyone together. Yes. Uh, it's yes. a fitting year-ender. Thank you. Mm, thank you, thank you. Isang family tayo dito. Wala bang pa po? Ay, photo, na. lahat ng umatend. Bukas tayo ng camera. Oo nga, game. Oo. Yung nire-record natin dito, ma-ano to eh, ma- i-edit natin ng content, then i-upload natin kasama sa UPRI tsaka sa Man Modeling Group. Yan. Okay. Open tayo ng video. Yung mga nandito, huwag kayo mahiya. Kahit... Kahit ano, gulo-gulo pa yung video. Nakapagkape na siguro, oo. Ay, pareho naman tayong kape pa lang ang ano. Hi Vicky, anyo nga sa'yo. <laughs> ang mga taga... Oo, mas maaga pa kina Vicky. 
Ay, sir, sir, sir Guido, hello po. Kamusta? <laughs> Ay, Dean Jomar. Kamusta naman? Uh, congratulations Ayan, to, to everyone. Hello yes, po. congratulations to UPRI and to uh, your initiatives sa mga research niyo. Magaganda. Thank you po. Mm-hmm. May gusto pa po bang humabol sa video? Counting once? <laughs> Counting twice? <laughs> si Sir Mahar yata nagdadrive pa eh. <laughs> Hi Sir Manix, nasa Bindandao ka pa ba ngayon? Nasa Manila na? Wala na sa Bindandao. Nabigay ko na yung mga ano, mga laptops. Equipment. Thank you po. Salamat Sir Manix. Naging delivery boy si Sir Manix. <laughs> Ayan. Okay na po ba tayo? O magka-count na ako. One, two, three smile. Okay, may humabol pa si Sir Mahar. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah, hey. <coughs> one, two, three. Okay. Thank you very much po. At uh, i-upload po natin itong mga video. Jomar, Jomar. Hey, Sir Mahar. Sulat ulit kayo ng proposal. Baka sakali 2022 may follow-up tayo. <laughs> Sige, Sir. Although, ginakabahan pa ako sa mga procurement natin kasi may mga for investment pa ako. Pero go. <laughs> Sige. Uh, announcement yun for everybody, ha? Uh, okay. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank Merry Christmas, you. Peter. Ah, yung Pasko sa Tanan. Peter. Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy New Year. Christmas. Sige po. Yeah. Bye-bye. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Uh, better year ahead. Yeah.